Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. This is Present Ideas number four. And this is what we're going to look at today. It's a picture frame. But I've brought you in nice and close, and I'll just go through uh, the key features. Dimensions, it is 170 millimeters across. Uh, the height, uh, all the way up to the very top here, is 240 millimeters. Uh, the size of the aperture here is 120 by 170 millimeters. There's a piece of glass in there. If I turn it round, you can see there's a backing piece of wood here. And this backing piece of wood has attached to it uh, a rear stand element. Okay? There's just a single uh, homemade uh, brass catch at the top. And when I release that, it allows this to come out. And at the bottom here, there is a magnet. And this magnet operates on this screw here, uh, which is screwed into the bottom of the rear stay. And uh, the rear stay is held onto this backing piece with a pair of screws and some glue. Now, when I started to make this, I thought that I would have some little feet at the bottom here made out of the same piece of wood as the, the, the main frame. Uh, but I discovered that there was a weakness in my piece of wood, a very, very minor structural fault here. And so what I've ended up doing is putting a piece across here with the grain running that way. It's glued on, and that supports uh, the uh, front piece where the grain is running vertically like so. Uh, so I changed my ideas as I went along to match my material. The piece of glass is two millimeters thick and I got it from my local glazing shop and the dimensions of the glass are 186 by 136 millimeters and that dimension is dictated by the size of the rebate which I've cut here to take the glass. At the top here there's a piece of wood uh, which is designed to just thicken up uh, the top slightly so I can put this screw in here for the brass stay which I've made. Uh, that piece of wood also has a grain running that way and also serves just to stiffen up this top piece a little. And the wood I've used is Paduk but you can use whatever you happen to have lying around or whatever you can get uh, from your local supplier. Uh, now I'm trying to mark this out so I can cut out first of all uh, the hole where the photograph is going to go. I'm going to rough it out with jigsaw and then after that I'm going to clean it up with the writer. Now this wood um, is dark and an pe ordinary pencil doesn't show up very well but I bought recently uh, this this thing and it's um, I'm, I'm sure you'll have seen them in shops and so on. Uh, it's a thing called a pika dry. Uh, and I bought it in that shop I was in in the Netherlands where I did the cycling interview uh, for those that watch all my videos uh, and I can't remember how much it was but it wasn't a huge amount of money it's got a nice soft uh, lead and that really does show up very well so there I have four holes uh, which will make uh, the jigsawing very simple Well, there we go. That was quite simple. Let's cut the bulk of it out. Uh, I'll now trim around with the writer to make it really neat. Reminding the, uh, the, the beauty of this uh, Festool CMSOF unit uh, with the Festool writer is that cutter changes are really easy. And you don't need to use an extension collet on the writer. That's it, that's the new one in. Very straightforward. After cleaning up the inside of the hole here, I've put a roundover uh, bit around the face side of the frame, and I've used this eighth of an inch roundover bearing guided cutter uh, from the trend set. On the other side, and I've just finished doing this, I've put a rebate all the way around, which will take the glass.
Now this has been done on the uh, Festool writer table and uh, I've used this uh, dust collection gadget to improve the dust collection from this type of operation. Now I'm frequently being asked about the various tools that I use and that's uh, the reason why I'm, I usually stop in the middle of the video and tell you. Um, the chisels I'm using uh, are my set of five Veritas PMV11 chisels and the PMV11 is the steel that's used it really holds its edge and I've got PMV11 in my Veritas planes that I have as well and I bought these from uh, Lee Valley about six months ago absolutely brilliant and if you're in the UK uh, looking for these and I, I'm pretty sure that Axminster will do them or the Woodworkers Workshop uh, and there must be others as well well, I've just uh, cut out roughly the uh, top end here of the frame so I can add this uh, decorative bit to it. I've got a little uh, sanding gadget which will allow me to do nice curved sanding there which you'll see shortly. Right, I've I've moved on a little bit. I've um, finished smoothing off the frame, which you saw me doing. Uh, I've now added a piece at the bottom, and I've cut this at an angle of 12 degrees so that that will sit uh, like that uh, on a tabletop or whatever. So that's 12 degrees. I've been to the glaziers, and I've got myself a piece of glass, the right size, and I've cut a piece of um, it's a piece of old walnut, uh, which is also to the right size to fit in uh, the slot at the back. So far, so good. Very straightforward. And that's what it's looking like uh, at the front now. But what I want to do now is to have a support at the back here. And uh, also, we need to hold in uh, the glass and uh, this piece of wood, and the photograph which would be trapped between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a magnet in this hole here, which goes in the bottom. And it's one of these uh, barrel magnets uh, which you get at a DIY shop that push in. I've made the hole for that already. And then I'm in the process of making up a rear support, which will go in something like this. This is the piece of wood that came out from the centre. Uh, and I've put in here a screw. And that screw will marry up with that magnet. This piece of wood will be attached to the piece of walnut. And therefore, uh, when it is attached there and it meets the magnet, it will hold it in at the bottom. So all I now need, in addition, is some form of little clip at the top to stop the top end from coming adrift. Right, I want to show you a little trick uh, now. Uh, I want to put a, a nice gentle curve on the back of this rear support that's going at the back of the picture frame. Uh, and uh, a good thing for doing curves is a steel rule. Uh, but it's always quite tricky to uh, get the steel rule to the right shape. So what I've done is I've put a pair of path dogs into my bench top. Uh, I've got a distance piece here which just happens to be about right. And what I'm doing is I'm just playing with the angles uh, until I get it just where I want it, which is there. And I'm now going to take my pencil that's where I want it and I'm going to draw along there and lo and behold I've got a, a gentle curve and I can cut that out uh, with the jigsaw now. Right that's done it was actually very tricky to hold um, but uh, I've, I've managed it and I'm now just going to clean that up with my circular uh, sanding gadget. Right because when the back is in here uh, this is slightly proud of that surface uh, in order for the um, little catch which I've made up to be uh, flush with the surface of the back, uh, I've got to use this distance piece. And this is the little catch I've made up. It has a single screw which will go through here, and that will then hold the back in place. And the bottom's held by the magnet. Right, I'll leave that. I'll just go and have a quick cup of tea. When I come back, I'll be able to continue. And I'm using my low angle block plane uh, by Veritas. Uh, it's a beautiful, absolutely lovely plane. It's quite expensive, but it really is super duper. 
Uh, you can get them direct from Lee Valley. Uh, you can get them from Axminster Power Tools, I know that, and also from the Woodworkers Workshop. Well, I, I've just vacuumed that off. Uh, I've put this rear stay on there, and uh, now all I've got to do is apply some Osmo. Very exciting. This is the best bit now, because the wood will come to life now. You watch. I'm using the Osmo PolyX Gloss on this. It's my new favorite finish. Now, I'm not sure how well it's showing up because of the distance, but uh, just look at that luster. Isn't that starting to look really, really nice? Uh, I need to just point out at this stage that this uh, supporting piece at the back uh, is glued on to this piece of walnut, but I've also put a pair of screws here, which are countersunk, and so they're below the surface. Okay, uh, right, we're osmoed up, and you can see just how lovely that looks, and I'm now going to put the photograph in. And uh, there's my piece of glass. Just make sure the photograph's up the right way, which it is. There it goes. Position it carefully. Uh, put this in. The magnet's now holding this at the bottom at this end. And I've got my little catch at the top. And there we go. And there it is. I'm rather, rather pleased with that. And I like the, the flowing line of this uh, rear support. Uh, that's very good. I also like the curve up here. Well, I hope that gives you an idea for another present you can make in the workshop in about a day. Uh, I'll come up with more ideas as time goes on, I'm sure. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.